Hello, and welcome to Organized Chaos Home Hacks Edition. Um, you know, I have been on a journey of de-stressing, over-under-complicating home systems um, for a really long time. So I, I'm sure you know this as you have decided to purchase this course. Um, so you have been around or you know, but I was um, about to have my fourth baby and this, so this was, um, almost six years ago, I was about to have my fourth baby and I had three kiddos. They were four, three, and one, almost two, five. I don't even know. Two, four, and six, two, four, and five. It doesn't matter. I was knee deep in all the things. I was pull-ups. Everybody had some pull-ups. Everyone was still doing the things. And I was so exhausted as to what and who I was trying to become. And I was missing everything. I missed Brown Day for Gingerbread Man. I missed. And so then I would get the school calling and they would say like, oh, you you missed this, you know, or she's really sad because she doesn't have her teddy bear for teddy bear picnic, or you didn't fill in this permission slip, or it was their anniversary. It was so-and-so's birthday. And it was like, I'm adding another human being to this. I have got to figure this out. And it wasn't this, like, it wasn't like I, I didn't have systems in place, but they weren't, they weren't going to carry me through a season of a new baby. And so that's where organized chaos stemmed from. I had always been able to take care of myself, especially in my last pregnancy, my last two pregnancies, I had really found the ability to understand the importance of not pouring from an empty cup that began to, I, I, I picked up on that one really fast. I didn't however pick up on the sleep one, which we'll get into, but I definitely realized like I have got to figure out some systems. And so I was, um, I, I had this, this thought of like, you know, I've always helped women with their health and wellness and I've always heard all the excuses, right? Like I, you know, oh, I'm ready to start this thing and I'm ready to like go all in. And then they, you know, get a cold or their kid gets sick or they are moving or they are, I don't know, you name it. I've heard it all. And I was like, man, we're really willing to just sacrifice what we were so ready to commit because it didn't fit into our perfectly un chaotic system. Right. And so I decided at that point, I was ready to really create and stop forgetting and stop pretending like seasons and things weren't going to keep happening because the reality is they were going to keep happening. Someone was always, I had four little humans. Um, at that point we didn't have a dog, but now we have a dog and a dragon. And, um, I, there was always going to be something and we've gone on, we've moved three times since then. And we've had, you know, endless things happen to us because that's life. And that is what is going to happen. And so when organized chaos became, it was this simple system. It was simple systems to basically organize your chaos so that when the uncontrollable happens, your entire life does not completely derail. And that's what it is. And so that's what you are here for. Um, you are about to embark on what potentially could truly change your whole life. And I think that, you know, we, we don't take that lightly. Um, you didn't just purchase this course to kind of purchase this course. If you truly put the work in, you will see the fruit in this, these systems and they're not like scientific systems. They're not systems. I didn't go to school to be a therapist to help you with these things. I am a real mom with real kids who has been in the trenches of life and has managed to maintain some order. I am not perfect. I will never pretend to be perfect. Um, I am simply uh, just dedicated to the cause of what I think God created me to be. And a little backstory, um, because like, people always ask, like, how did you become this person who like thrives in chaos? Um, in 20, in 2001, I was there for 
Um, I lived in New York City and I witnessed the first tower fall down. And that began a series of events in my life that were beyond my understanding as to why I always ended up in these chaotic situations. But through all of these chaotic situations, I was given, I had to thrive. I had to keep going. And so now I feel like I know what it feels like to be in the valley and to bring myself bring myself out of it. And it feels good. It feels really good. And it feels, um, it feels better than living in the angst and the anxiousness of it all. So I hope you'll dig in. I hope that you'll show up. I hope you'll implement. And if it begins to, this is my biggest lesson. If it begins to overwhelm you, put it into the categories that I break down in this email and just go to it when you are ready and put on your to-do list, which is going to be very close to one of the very first things we talk about. Put it on your to-do list for one, one email per week. You're going to get them every day because there's a lot of them and there's a lot of things, but put it onto your weekly to-do list, one email per week. That's it. That's all I want you to do. I want you to take on one concept at a time. And when you begin to add that habit in, don't try to put all the habits in because then you're just going to get overwhelmed and there'll be too many things and you will drown. One habit. So for example, no snooze, okay? Learning to figure out the how much sleep you need and how to get it. And then never snoozing on your alarm. We're going to go over that. But take that habit and run with it for a week before you do anything else, even if it means, even if you're like, no, but I, I've got that. I, I, I nailed it. The science behind the no snoozing is so profound and I'm so ready to move. Nope. I want you to soak in it. Okay. When we begin to put habits, we have to let, we have to feel the effect of it and see how powerful it is in our life. And then when that, when that happens and you begin to see it and feel it, all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I get it. I really, truly get it. So one email a week, these emails will come. My best advice to you, and I'm going to share a screenshot in this email is to put it into these categories and then, you know, okay, I'm going to go, I'm tackling, I'm going to tackle home today. I'm going to tackle this today. I'm going to tackle my kids. I want this one. This makes more sense for now. Bing, 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 bing. Okay. That's how this is going to roll. And that's how you are going to succeed. You are going to become a master of not becoming overwhelmed with the process of being organized. Because think about that. If you are overwhelmed by the chaos, the process of becoming organized, then you're not ready to take this on. And that's okay. Because maybe you're going to just be every two weeks, you're adding a habit. Every, every whatever you add a habit. But every time you add that habit and you come back and you go, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. And it's changing my life. You're going to go, wow, I'm ready for the next habit. Wow, I'm ready for the next habit. And you're going to see your you're going to see everything change. You're going to see your family change. You're going to see your marriage change. You're going to see your kids your relationship with your kids change. You're going to see you change. And it's going to be powerful and it's going to be impactful and I can't wait to hear about it. And so I hope that you will reply back and say I'm here and I am ready. And I hope that each and every day it's maybe maybe after that week is over it's like hey Kim I didn't snooze this week and I can't tell you what that extra 30 minutes did in my life. Here's what it did. It led me to a prayer filled life. And I've been wanting that for 10 years. Wow. And guess what those prayers did? They brought me and my husband closer. They brought closure to this relationship that I've been suffering through for years. They helped me figure out a purpose that I didn't know I had. They helped me draw myself closer to my friend. I was able to pray for that friend or that person that I didn't know that I would need to, but because I read that devotional, that 30 extra minutes that I had in that nose snooze land was monumental to my life. And I know that I will, she will never forget that moment. This is how lives are changed. 
This is how we become the generational changers. This is how we were made for such a time as this, because we are intentional, we are capable, and we know that our purpose is greater than suffering through laundry or, or dishwashers or our kids saying no. They're going to say no. But when your affection that you've been dying to feel from your husband begins to change because of a simple thing, you'll see it and you'll feel it. And that is what I can't wait to hear about. So welcome to what will potentially be one of the biggest changes that your family and your generations to come will feel forever. <laughs>